Welcome, friend. We're so glad you joined us today. We thank you for your concern and for choosing our church uh, to worship. We thank you very much. You're always welcome here. Let us give you our order of service. We have Sunday school on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, and we have Sunday morning service starting at 12 o'clock. And on Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we have Bible study. And Friday at 6 o'clock, we have evangelistic service. And you're welcome to come to all of our services. And we're soliciting your prayer. Continue to pray for us, and we will pray for you. We are trying to get the word of God to the people. And we solicit your prayer, your support, in whatever way you can. Now let's go to our service that's already in progress. Deeper than that, Lord, I need you to help me. 
Go a little deeper than that. Lord, I can't make it if you don't help me. Help me on my journey. Help me on my way.
My wife and I were traveling one time. We got down, I believe, in Kentucky. And uh, there, a lot of boulders had fallen, big rocks had fallen down. Uh, then when it got on down the road, it said, in the explosion area. I'm saying, in it? I didn't know we had been in it. They were exploding, you know, putting dynamite. No, I think it said dynamite here. Put dynamite in them big boulders that explode and make them fall down so they could clear them up because they would freeze in the wintertime and expand and budge and it make it dangerous. So rather than be able to turn loose and fall, they would explode in the dynamite to make them come on down so they could clear up because they could have been waiting till you come along in a car and it tumble down. And it, it, most cars won't hold the weight. Well, no car won't hold the weight of those boulders coming down. So can't you see how God looks out after us and we don't even know? Amen. We go to bed at night, wake up tomorrow, oh, thank God I feel good. No, you better thank God for protecting you through the night. Storm could have come. I so often think about that. God is good. Don't you know God could allow a tornado to come while we were asleep? We couldn't be alert. So, but I can run to my basement. Don't you know that safety in Jesus? If that, if that man of God comes to you running to that baby, all he has to do is let the top floor fall in on you. You trapped down in the baby, you can't get out. Or oh, they can bring bulldogs. Can you imagine bulldogs grab you? That thing close up around your head and pick up, pull your head off, the rest of your body still down there. Well, God is good. You wake up in the morning, look out, then I'm going to get ready for work. I'm like, oh, Lord, I thank you. That's the first thing. That's the first thing. Because without God, we can do how much? Nothing. Praise God. You know, that's what I want to talk about. How many got joy? How many got joy? J-O-Y. Anybody got joy? You know, when you think of the goodness of God and what he had, we're coming from Nehemiah. We're going to be speaking a little bit from the 8th chapter of Nehemiah. When, when we think of the goodness of of God and what God has done for us, we need to every now and then lift up our voice and say, Lord, I thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you are going to do for me. We need to thank God for it. Don't you know it makes your future easier when you thank God for your past experience with him and for your present experience with him, you see what he has already done for you. You see what he has already brought you through. You see what good things he has already uh, 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 brought to pass in your life. You see he has blessed you to rear your children from where they were in the emphasis up until now and didn't let you crack up. Don't you know most children crack their parents up? You wonder why you got so many cracked up parents. These children are cracked up. What cracked them up? Crack? I mean, uh... Oh yeah, no one they call that stuff crack. You've never seen anybody use that stuff and didn't act like they were cracked up. The best up person get on that crack, they go like, Crazy. You know what? They are cracked up. The next day. Why are you looking at me like that? What you mean? You hit me upside the head with a ball like that? No, I did. You don't remember now. Why? I was on my crack. You may know somebody be away in the next town that's on some of that crack. You may know somebody. They do some terrible things. But aren't you glad that God spared you to get to where you are without being cracked up? You ought to say, Lord, I thank you. I'm not cracked up. I may be a little cracked, but I'm not cracked up. Yeah. None of us got enough mind to write home about it. With all the problems we have to deal with. So if you've been offering somebody a piece of your mind, you better quit. Or you 
you don't have that much left. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. We don't have that much to give away. We can barely get through here. And you're going to give away part of that? Oh, no. Uh -uh. Ask God to give me my mind back instead of giving it away. Praise God. I thank God for what he has done for me. Sometimes I look back. If you ever do this, look like you said, well, Lord, after all you have done for me, I, I can't see where I have done much for you. Do you ever feel like that? I, I haven't done enough for God, depending on what God has done for me. We can't give him anything, but how do we give God something? By sharing with someone else. God doesn't need what we got. But he needs us to be blessed by giving him something. Not because he needs it. He, we just need to be blessed by giving. I really know it's more blessed to give than to receive. Yeah. I'd much rather, I'd much rather to give you a hundred dollars than to be somewhere in destitute. So, Lord, I, I, I wish I could get a hundred dollars. I'm not saying all that guys, so don't y'all come running to me for no hundred dollars. I'm not saying I did. And if I had it, I'd much rather give it to you than to be. You, you hear what I'm saying? Don't be sitting around outside the door. You promise I'm not going to promise you nothing. <laughs> I said I'd rather be in a position to give than to be sitting around looking pitiful. Well, you know what I'm talking about. You know, and we could be pitiful. But through the help of God, we trust him to do what he does. Then when he does what he does, we thank him for doing what he did. Man. That's not hard, is it? All he asks of us is to appreciate, to praise him, to thank him, and to tell others about him. And we said, I said, well, he done blessed me. He blessed me, me, me and my three make four. Ain't worried about no more. It's, it's four. Well, yeah, two more, my dog and my cat. No. Thank God for what he has done. It's all right if you say it now. Say, Lord, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Now say it like you mean. Lord, Lord I thank you. I thank you. You didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do it. But I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God has been good. When I think about the goodness of God, the joy of the Lord is your what? You know why some people are, are so weak? They don't seem to be joyful. You ask them to telephone, testify, telephone. You ask them, you ask them to testify. They get up. I, I thank you for my many, many blessings. You know, when I look around, I, I, I see a few things you did for me. Of course, you could have done more, but I appreciate what you did. You think God is pleased with that? No, God has done far more than we give Him credit for. God has done far more. Could have been dead so long ago. And then we sit around, and some people have a nerve, mother, to feel like I'm all of that in a bag of chips. We are nothing without God. Nothing. Nothing without God. And I almost just, well, I can't hardly stand people that all lifted up in pride. Looking down their nose at somebody else who they think is less for. You are where you are. You are what you are. You are who you are because of who he is. So we need to humble ourselves. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. But he did something to me. I'll never forgive him. You won't make it to heaven. Guarantee you won't make it to heaven. You got to have a forgiving spirit. Just as God had a forgiving spirit. Read a few verses, Mother, in the eighth chapter of Nehemiah. And all the people gathered down together as one man in the street. And the people gathered themselves together. Huh? One man, now talk about this water gate that y'all heard about on, on the radio or TV. It's not talking about that water gate. The water gate is the gate where the water comes through. Anybody ever been up to Sault Ste. Marie? I haven't, but I heard they can, you know, raise in the Lord. You know, that's one place I would like to go. That, that's one of the places. A lot of places I would like to go, but that's one. I'd like my wife and I to just sit and look and watch that. 
I like to watch the hand of work of God. You see, all man made that. I don't care what man made it. Without God, they couldn't have done it. So I'm claiming that is the hand of work of God. Just like they put that bridge across across uh, the combination of of uh, Lake Huron and Lake Michigan. Why did they put it that? That's the narrowest part of that. Only five miles. Once you get on the wild part, it's farther than five miles. So they found the narrow piece. Then they put a bridge to connect lower Michigan with the upper peninsula of Michigan. You know, separate up that. You know, upper, lower, and up, up north. Praise God. They say you walk across that five miles. I ain't interested in walking no five miles across that. Two miles up here, two miles down here. I'll be out of breath before I get two tenths of a mile. I'm not interested in that. I said I walked enough when I was a boy. <laughs> Behind that four legged mule. Oh, foreign language to y'all. That four legged mule. That's an animal that kind of walk in a position like a dog, but they're a little bigger than a dog. You understand? Way bigger than a dog, stronger than a dog. You understand? Mew, M U L E, mew. Say mew. I know you don't know what you're talking about, but just say it anyway. <laughs> Praise God. So, so I never get excited about walking across that. I love driving across that. Feels good, you know. But why I look down at mother, she said. That does, see, she doesn't see too well. And she said, you better thank God. She's almost 400 feet up in there. She said, oh, it looks like it's just right there. <laughs> it is right there, 300 and some feet down to the water. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I got to take her again so she can really see it. Praise <laughs> God. Praise God. Uh, when they gather together in the streets, we don't gather in the streets. Most of us can't even get in the streets. Unless we drive, and then we're speeding through certain areas. Now you know I'm right. Certain areas after that sun go down, you wouldn't be caught over there. Amen. Wouldn't be caught dead over there unless somebody killed you, took you over there. <laughs> scared, right here in your native land. Somebody scared to go out the door in the dark. You peep out, who there? Who? Who there? This is man, man or who? Your daughter, man. Oh. Show your ID. <laughs> Pray God, we're scared. God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, mixed up man, sound man. So why are y'all so scared? Oh no, Pastor. Read. I can't do that with my 
12. That's only five hours. So if I keep you in here three hours, that'll still be two hours shorter. How's it you be there by yourself? Because me be gone. <laughs> Praise God. Now that's why you sit at the rear. I'm not going to hold you that long. I'm just kidding. Yes. Before the men and the women. Those that could understand. That lets you know somebody there that, that could not understand. How many understand the Bible every time you read? Don't put your hand up. I don't either. Sometimes I read, I don't even know how to pray about it. I say, Lord, what is this saying? And then the Lord will reveal to you. And somebody else will come up even after I'm gone today. You may turn on the TV and the same thing tomorrow and break it down and say, oh, pastor didn't say all of that. Nobody can say it all. You go home and read it, you're going to get something that I didn't bring out. I go back and read it again, I'll get something that I didn't get today. That's why we read it over and over and over and over. The same movies over and over. The same blues song over and over. Every time we say you got the blues, people look crazy when they got the blues. They look crazy. What happened? Got them. I don't know. How you doing, brother? What's wrong? I don't know. I just feel so unnecessary.
because when we meet, every time we meet, that could be the last time that we meet. I was in Tennessee this the other day, but they got away. Let's come closer together. Don't let the devil come between you and anybody that's in your family. Don't you know the devil hates unity? The devil does not like unity. The devil doesn't like your family to get along. The devil wants you to be fighting, not physically, but mentally and socially, want to divide and conquer. Get everybody in their own little separate area. You don't call me, so I ain't gonna call you. You don't text me because I, I, I didn't like what you said. I thought you was talking about me. Blah, blah, tweet, tweet, me, me, and TT. Let's get it together. This could be the last time that we meet together. I don't know. I hope it's not. But if anybody, you need to go to somebody. You can know when you haven't been right. Go to that person. Say, please forgive me. This may be your last time. This may be your last time. I was led to say that. And the devil said, no. They're going to think you preach it to them. You, you understand? You know how the devil will talk. But I want us to know. I'm talking about my family. I don't know about your family. But I can feel a little. You understand? Should be closer. Should be closer. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I don't know if I'll be able to say this to y'all again. I'm getting older too. I'm here almost to 80. I'm on 77. Three more years, Lord say, I'll be 80. See, the Lord promised us four scores and ten, which is seven. That's how to our reasonable, but we could go on to a hundred. You understand? You, but I don't know how long I'm going to be here. So I'm going to say what I need to say. Well, I, I pray y'all will love me for this. But if you don't, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you hate me for this, you, 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 that's going to come between you and God. I got to free myself. Let's get it together. Same with my church family. Let's get it together. We are one body here. Ain't nobody supporting this church but us. If the devil come in and destroy us and our relationship with us, what is that going to do? A house divided against itself. And the house can be the church, it can be the family, it can be your neighborhood, it can be your schoolmates or whatever. A house could be husband and wife. A house divided against itself. Not may not, but it will not. It cannot stand. Have I made myself clear? Let's get it together. Let's stand on the feet. Stand on the feet. There may be somebody here right now that want to just step out. Say, Lord, I, I, I heard the word and it has registered with me. And I see where I need to step it up a little notch. That doesn't mean you're doing bad. See, there are three stages. There's good, and what's the name? Better, and what's the name? Best. We may be good. We may even be better. But God wants us to be our best. And we can only be our best through him. If you're here, please just step out. Nobody going to look at you. Nobody going to judge you. We're going to pray for you. If you know you're a fallen short, step out. Step out. Don't be a scared. Don't be a scared. They all say, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Step out. We are going to pray for you. And I'm going to step out with you. Because I see areas where deeper than I could have done a little better. And it is my endeavor to do a little better. And I thought I was doing pretty good, pretty good. But when the word comes and you see yourself in the word, you say, Lord, help me to move up. All right, we got one standing. Okay, so the rest of us, we're going to stand with you in prayer. Dear God, this brave soul that have stepped out to acknowledge that they see themselves and they want to do better. God, we ask that you give them more of a determination, a do-right mind, a resistance 
to wrongdoing and healing to what the words say in Jesus name. And we pray that they will be strong and go against the odds because the devil is going to try to tell them you should not have stepped out. But bless them in spite of what the devil is saying. And we're counting victory in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Come on, give God some hand praise. Come on, give it to him. Give God some hand praise. No, who's the opposite of being law? So I don't want no outlaw. So since I don't want no outlaw, I don't, I don't have being law. I don't, I don't look at it like that. He's my son, and I treat him as my son, and he respects me as dad. We're not running buddies. We're not play buddies. We're just father and son. Is that all right? That's all right. Praise God. I respect him. He's a grown man. You know, you know. You know. Watch that. You can't treat grown people like children. I respect him. I don't mail him married my daughter. Man, I ain't getting in the middle of that soup. <laughs> I say you make your soup where you eat your soup. If you put too much salt in your soup, who's not eat that soup? So you better keep that sweet and sweet. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And I told him, I said, I don't take sides. Amen. And I mean that. Amen. Only side I take is I take the side of righteousness. Right. I ain't going to get nobody because you are who you are and I'm who I am. I don't do that. I'm going to deal fairly. I'm going to deal with you as I would have you deal with me. Amen. Praise God. Now, you're wrong when you start. I don't take sides because this is. Uh -uh. I don't play politics. Right and right. I'm for right. I'm for wrong. I'm against wrong. I don't care if I do. I'm just wrong. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you I'm right. Yeah, I just got off track, Deacon, and I'm wrong. you got to admit, I'm just wrong. Don't you know every one of you can get wrong every now and then? If you don't raise your hand, I raise them for you. You can get wrong every now and then. Amen. But thank God you have a do right mind. With that having been said, I thank God for my church mother. Amen. Good as you'll find anyway. Amen. She's a precious woman of God. I said to her, I said, I got good ear about a good deacon, good usher, good sister usher, good uh, photographer, or, or, or videographer, whatever you want to call them. Good members, good people. Y'all know why I consider y'all so good? Oh, God gave you to me. Y'all the only one that I have a chance to practice on. If I'm a bad pastor, y'all get the blame. If I'm a good pastor, I'll take the credit. <laughs> Praise God. I'm ready to tell we be. Me.
the morning so bright And the lamb, the lamb is alive And the night, the night is that black Under the sea Oh yes, there will be peace It's in the valley watching our service and for visiting us. We're so glad you came and look forward to seeing you the next time. But remember, now we solicit your continued prayer, your continued support, that we may continue to put this program on the airway. And until the next time, we are saying to you, thank you and to God be the glory.